Hello, we've made it through the first month of the year and winter is not done with us just yet. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a few minutes time. First up though, well, scenes like this out there right now across many parts of England and Wales. It's been a thoroughly wet January. Uh, waterlogged fields, rivers bursting their banks, even groundwater creeping up from below uh, as well. Now for East and North East England, it was the third wettest January on record. For East Anglia, the eighth wettest January. And that comes on the back here of the fifth wettest December on record as well. So when you add those two months together, December and January, uh, for the period just gone, December 2020, January 2021, it comes in at third place in a series back to 1862. So that is quite an exceptionally wet uh, spell of weather here. And actually, when you look back, it is the wettest December and January since 1914 to 1915 across East Anglia. A more recent example here, 2002, 2003, coming in at uh, fifth place, but uh, no doubt an exceptionally wet month. And that could be crucial for when we get some very hard frost potentially in the weeks to come, because that might have a bit of an impact on the sugar beet being stuck in the ground and that sort of thing. It's one thing to bear in mind. Now, another thing that we've been looking at over the last couple of weeks, uh, Fred uh, talked about this last week, the snow event that we had on Sunday, the 24th of January, so just over a week ago. Uh, these were the temperatures recorded on the next morning, on Monday, the 25th of January. Uh, these two stations highlighting how crucial snow cover is for the sorts of temperatures you get from it. So Wittering here near Peterborough in northwest Cambridgeshire, Marham just over 40 miles to the southeast in West Norfolk. Wittering had 18 centimetres of lying snow on that Monday morning, Marham had none. And you can see the big differences it has on those temperatures measured at different levels. Now snow cover acts like a blanket, so it prevents the heat from the ground from escaping and that means temperatures right near the ground, on the concrete here and the grass just above the ground, stayed close to and just a little bit below freezing. Yet the air temperature can get very cold over snow cover overnight, down to minus 8.4 here. So where you look at the air temperature, you may well think there was a severe frost with that, but actually the ground is protected by this snow cover. And that is crucial if you've got uh, crop and plants and so forth in the ground, because that snow cover can prevent a severe frost from happening if it's there. If it's not there, of course, well, the air temperature isn't quite as low, but you can get some very cold ground temperatures, minus nine on the grass here, uh, giving a pretty severe frost. So uh, snow cover can be your friend in some occasions, depending on the circumstance, of course, and we may well see more of that over the coming few weeks or so. The jet stream, here it is, south shifted, as it has been for most of this year, really since about Christmas. So aiming areas of low pressure across England and Wales, rather than across Scotland, where they would normally be, at this time of the year and allowing this pool of cold air to affect the northern half of the UK and that's been the case really as I say since about Christmas or so. So on Wednesday we've got two areas of low pressure. This is the main parent low, not moving anywhere in any great hurry. We've got these secondary features, this frontal wave if you like, uh, which could well bring some more persistent rain in that southeast corner for a time on Wednesday. But the main story is this big low here, another little feature on Thursday perhaps. But notice throughout this whole sequence this constant feed of moisture coming in on these easterly winds on the northern side of that low into Scotland. So we've got day after day of rain and snow across Scotland. There's going to be a lot of water here in the form of rain and snow, mainly focused on the eastern side of Scotland, where you've got that onshore flow off the North Sea. Uh, where on the western side of Scotland, you've got some protection from the mountains here, so less rainfall on the west side, where it's normally wet at this time of the year. So the rainfall anomalies are sort of reversed, if you like. Uh, in that respect. Further south, as I say, we'll have these couple of features coming through Wednesday and Thursday with some more organised areas of rain, but in between something a bit drier with a few showers along southern and western coast. But broadly speaking, low pressure is in charge for the rest of this work week. Really cold air locked in across Scandinavia, and that's why these lows can't move anywhere, because that is blocking the progress of these lows from clearing through and bringing in the next batch off the Atlantic. And that becomes more crucial into the weekend as well. Now, to understand what's going on this weekend, we have to look at the bigger picture across the globe. So over North America, a lot of cold air over Canada at this time of the year. And this is likely to dig south quite a bit across central and eastern parts of the US later this week and into the weekend. That will cause the jet stream to dig south, but equally it will strengthen the jet stream because the jet stream is driven by warm air from the tropics meeting very cold air coming out of the polar region. So where you get these two squeezing together, you get a faster flowing uh, jet stream. It becomes more active. That may come into play later on next week for us. For the weekend here, we've got this big dip in the jet stream here, 
across Spain, very warm air actually across the southern half of Europe later on this week, but incredibly cold air, as has been the case in Scandinavia for a few weeks now, locked in place. So again, you've got that temperature contrast, we've got a fairly active jet pattern, even if it is quite amplified, and when you get these strong temperature gradients across it, you can spin up fairly deep areas of low pressure, especially when it interacts with the jet stream. And that's the difficulty this weekend, because this jet stream is going to develop areas of low pressure near Spain, want to push them north across France, but how far north they get uh, depends on its interaction with this big block of cold air sitting across Scandinavia, and that's where things get interesting from a UK perspective as well. So the start of the weekend, we've got that old low sitting somewhere over north and western parts of the UK. We're starting to see another area of low pressure developing across Spain and Iberia as well. And by the end of the weekend, it's likely this feature will fizzle and slip a bit further south and sort of joining forces with the low coming up from Spain across France. So the question is, how far north can this push? Now, as that first low fizzles and clears south, what we're left with is an increasingly cold easterly wind coming out of Scandinavia bringing in that very cold air that we've seen building over Scandinavia for the last few weeks. So turning increasingly cold across northern Britain early in the weekend, and that will gradually extend southwards as we go through the weekend and that low pressure starts to clear. But the question is, does it get all the way down into the southeast? Or will we still have some slightly less cold air trying to cling on to the extreme southeast closer to that area of low pressure? Now, the most likely scenario is this low stays to our south Many of us go into this cold east northeasterly wind, and that in turn, moving over a relatively warm North Sea, will bring quite a few snow showers into eastern parts of the UK in particular. But because of the strength of that wind, they will blow well inland uh, as well. So even western areas, which are generally more sheltered in this situation, could still see some snow showers getting that far west, especially if we get some more organised troughs moving through from the east as well. But it is something to bear in mind because this low could prove problematic. And if it does push further north, well, initially it could bring a longer spell of rain with snow mixed in with it, but it could also bring some slightly less cold air potentially into some southern parts of the UK. There's a bit of uncertainty about exactly how far north and therefore how cold the air might be across the UK the early part of next week. But as I say, the most likely scenario is it stays to the south of us and we get a cold easterly wind bringing in quite a bit of wintriness, some sleet and snow in eastern parts of the UK as well. So to understand that a little bit better, we've shown these before. This is an ensemble plot of the air mass that's about a measure of the temperature about a mile above the ground. I picked Newcastle here as an example. So each of these gray lines is a different computer model. The red line here is the median or the middle value, if you like, of all of these uh, gray lines, just to highlight the trends. Now the black line here, that's average for the time of the year. Uh, just for comparison, I put on here the beast from the east in 2018, just so you can see what we're talking about in relation to how cold that was. That was arguably some of the coldest air we've seen in the UK during the past 40 years. You have to go back to uh, 92 or even 87 to find some colder air over the UK uh, than the beast from the east. So we're not, as you can see here, we're not talking about the same magnitude of cold air that we saw back in 2018, but there are some of these models that are going pretty cold, even if they're not going quite as cold as 2018 and the most likely scenario is it will be the coldest air we've seen so far this winter coming in from the east or the northeast. As you can see there is a prolonged period here from late this weekend through much of next week where we are quite below average in Newcastle at least uh, but across many parts of the UK by the looks of things. And then a trend later in the week and into the weekend for things to recover back near a normal as we head towards the, the weekend in Newcastle but the further south you are that transition may take place a little bit earlier on, say midweek, for example, in the south and southwest. But it does look likely we will go into a pretty cold spell through this weekend and into the first half of next week at least, uh, with all the various wintry hazards that could bring with it as well. Later next week, as I alluded to, things will change, we think, and it looks like the jet stream, which will be reinvigorated by the cold over the US this weekend, will start to drive from fairly deep areas of low pressure towards the UK during the second half of next week, with that, as you can see, wind and rain potentially. And again, on the leading edge as it moves into that colder air, initially we could well see some more significant snow before eventually that mild air tries to push into southern Britain towards the weekend and the beginning of the following week. Now, there's still a lot of uncertainty about how exactly next week will play out. We're giving you the most likely solution uh, at the moment, and that is obviously cold for the first half of the week and then uh, less cold and more wet and windy and eventually milder as we head towards the end of the week, although it could well stay cold in Scotland where the mild air never really quite gets um, this far north. And again, like we've seen so far, there could well be some fairly significant snow 
in parts of uh, the, the UK as well. Now this is a meteorogram trying to highlight lots of different weather variables in one diagram uh, for Lincoln here. Uh, just a few things to, to point out primarily. So this uh, red line and the shading here, that's the most likely forecast air temperature, the shading denoting the spread of possible outcome using our ensemble data. And you can see naturally that shading gets larger the further ahead you go as the uncertainty uh, grows. The red line is the most likely value for the air temperature as you go forward over the next 10 days or so. Now these two dashed lines, that's the average maximum and average minimum temperature for the time of the year. So as long as that red line is staying within these two dashed lines, it's pretty much where you would expect it to be for this stage in February. But you'll notice through the sequence that trend downwards to below average temperatures by the end of the weekend and into the beginning of next week. And then right at the end, there's just this little bit here where it comes back up near a normal around Thursday next week or so. Just a hint that things may recover later on in the week. Now, another thing to point out here, the chance of snow from all of these ensemble members, fairly high, as you can see in this row here, early on this morning, and we did see some snow in Lincolnshire last night. Then we start to get these chances coming up again late Friday into Saturday. So there's clearly a bit of uncertainty about how quickly that transition to cold easterly uh, comes in. But there is a growing signal here by Sunday through Monday and into Tuesday for quite a few of these. These are percentages of our forecast models suggesting the risk of snow in Lincolnshire. Uh, and even that's still there later on in the week, even though the temperatures are coming up. And that's because as those fronts come in off the Atlantic, we could well see um, some snow on the leading edge for a time. On the wind side of things, notice these easterly winds kick in some point on Saturday by the looks of things. Quite brisk as well, some quite strong, uh, you know, brisk, biting northeasterly winds Sunday, Monday uh, as well. And then eventually later on in the week, they start to swing around to a southerly, then eventually a southwesterly, just indicating things may turn less cold and more unsettled later on uh, in the week. So that was quite a lot of information. It is chopping and changing quite a bit. The themes are broadly the same, but if you want specific detail for your part of the world, given the uncertainty in the forecast at the moment, the best advice really is to, is to speak to our forecasters because we're looking at all of this data and we'll try and break it down for you and hopefully give you some useful information uh, going forward. But we're available on our forecast hotline every day, including weekends from six in the morning through till six in the evening. So that took us to the end of next week. Now that change over to unsettled weather by the end of next week is likely to continue into the beginning of what we call week three. So this is the beginning of this week here, Monday the 15th of February. Uh, the pressure anomalies here, higher than average pressure towards Iberia and again still to the north of the UK, but it's likely low pressures will squeeze through in between. Uh, so I still think an unsettled look to things for the beginning of this week with some wet and windy weather but relatively mild weather across southern Britain in particular, whereas the further north you are, you may well stay, as you have done so far, in cold weather much of the time. Uh, in terms of rainfall, well, drier than average, where you've got that uh, higher than average pressure down here across Spain and Portugal, still very unsettled. There's a, a separate area of low pressure spinning around in Eastern Europe during this time frame, so that's why we've got above average rainfall here. And I think for the UK, wettest during the first half of the week and then perhaps becoming a bit drier later on in the week and that's why the signal becomes rather weak here uh, because you're sort of wet at first, drier later, all averaging out to near normal um, for the time of the year. And still that cold air locked in across Scandinavia, Eastern Europe, even into parts of say Northern Germany for example. In the UK I think temperatures will recover to above average for some places through this week, especially in the southern half and the further north you are, you're more likely to stay perhaps below average during this time frame. Now Fred mentioned this last week, this has been a, a signal for a little while now for pressure to build a bit more as we head towards the latter part of February. So it's certainly possible we might see low pressure becoming less frequent, shall we say, better chance of maybe some higher pressure uh, building in details yet to be determined for the end of the month. Now that could still bring some fairly chilly conditions with frost overnight and fog, low cloud, that doesn't really clear that sort of thing. So it doesn't necessarily mean mild, it could actually be quite a chilly spell of weather. Uh, if that high pressure develops, depending on where we see that position of the high and where the winds are blowing from. But the most likely scenario is for fairly chilly, but something a bit drier uh, for the latter part of the month. You can see the brown shading here indicating slightly drier than average uh, rainfall, but still wetter than average across Central and uh, Eastern Europe. So there is quite a bit going on, potentially some fairly hazardous weather um, as we go through the weekend, more especially into the beginning of next week. 
This week we are expecting further rain and significant snow across Scotland over the next few days and even elsewhere there will be some showers or, or even some longer spells of rain occasionally in the far southeast. But then the real cold turns up through the weekend, increasingly so as the weekend goes on and it could well be significantly cold for the beginning of next week with easterly winds bringing in snow showers again mostly in the east but they will push well inland at times on those strong winds and where we get any more organised features coming in. And then later in the week, the possibility it may turn more unsettled from the west or the southwest, uh, and that could well be preceded by some snow for a time, and eventually it will start to turn milder towards the weekend and into the beginning of the following week in more southern parts of the UK. So that's how things are looking at the moment. There's a lot of possibilities. This is the most likely scenario. Uh, and as ever, we'll try and keep you up to date as usual with our day-by-day -day forecast on our social media.